place that we got to. Oh, yeah. I need a line. Uh, I'll get to that one. When we switch. Okay. 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 Uh, you have a question? Um, yes. This chair jacked so up. Number two, uh, for number three, um, when we construct the matrix A, uh -huh. because this uh, is two dimensional, so we should consider the boundary conditions in the matrix, right? Right. Um, it's not just like a banded matrix. Um, it's. Uh, well, actually, it's technically it's banded, but it's best to think of it as, uh, like I described, as a chronic product of a tridiagonal matrix with the identity. Um, so, what happens is, uh, for a part of the Laplacian, okay, so you have, um, okay, so this is problem two, part C. You have your Laplacian is second derivative with respect to x plus second derivative with respect to y applied to u um, equals zero. And um, so what happens is for a part we have the uh, second partial derivative with respect to x, you have your. Um, Second derivative. Okay. Right. Um, so identity chronic or product would be uh, matrix for second derivative, whereas for second with respect to y is the chronic or product in the uh, opposite order. Um, so. The result of that is what this chronic product looks like is just this second derivative matrix all the way down the diagonal um, and zeros everywhere else. So, so this matrix is actually tridiagonal. Um, and what happens is within each one of these blocks, um, for the first and last rows, you're going to have. Um, boundary values play a role. So, uh, so what will happen is, um, okay, so you're transforming this into a matrix A times U is equal to B, and um, B is going to be mostly zero, but it's going to pick up boundary terms from the first and last row of each one of these blocks. Uh, for, from this part. Um, on the other hand, uh, also, um, the second derivative matrix is 1 over delta x squared. You have minus 2's down the diagonal and 1's above and below. Okay. Um, now, the uh, other matrix that's a chronic product in the opposite order. It's going to be structured this way. Um, it, you're going to have this kind of structure, except instead of numbers, you're going to have identity matrices. So you'll have a 1 over delta x squared minus 2 identity all the way down a diagonal. And then you'll have plus identity in the Super diagonal and sub diagonal blocks. So, this is just an artifact of what the chronic product does. Um, now, um, so what's going to happen in this case is here you're computing uh, second derivatives, but in this first um, block row, you're going to have boundary values. Um, and also in this last block row, you're going to have boundary values. So, um, so each one of these matrices is going to cause boundary values to appear in B, but in a different way. Um, so first and last row of each of these, and then just this fir first whole block here and this last block row uh, down here. Um, so. Um, So, um, 
So now if I, if I take a look at this on the IJ level, um, so actually I'll do that on this board. Okay, I need to get my line straight. How far down can I go? Mm, let's see. That's perfect. Uh, at this point, I'm talking about uh, problem 2C on the homework. Um, and I have a previous board that I'll show you that previous board in a moment. Uh, but all this is being recorded too. Okay. Okay. So here we have second derivative respect to x. And, um, and then we have second derivative with respect to y, where the i index is going to be fixed and the j index is varied. And all of that equals zero. Um, now, um, see, this is second derivative with respect to y. Okay. Um, so in effect, uh, so what's going to happen here is these terms correspond to your diagonal entries. And in this example, we're assuming delta x is equal to delta y. We're using a uniform grid in both directions. Um, so in fact, your diagonal entries, these two terms will combine. And you'll have minus 4 over delta x squared. Um, and then... Um, These terms will correspond to the sub and super diagonal of your overall matrix. And these terms will be um, like n diagonals away. Um, so, um, so, 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 the, so the actual bandwidth of this matrix is going to be like uh, uh, upper lower band would be n minus 1, but you're going to have several bands of zeros in between. Um, okay, but you're going to have this equation in every row, but what's going to happen is you're going to have boundary terms in row k, which is equal to this expression I had earlier, j minus 1 times n plus i. Um, and this 
to be the case when i is equal to 1, or i equals n, and then j equals 1, or j equals n. Because what's going to happen is, in, the, like let's, in this example, let's suppose that i is equal to 1. We're going to have a u0 here. That's a boundary value. So this term has to be moved to the other side um, to contribute to your b vector. Um, similarly, like in this case, let's suppose j is equal to n. We're going to have ui n plus 1. That's also a boundary value. So this term has to move to the other side. So it's from figuring out which terms here must be moved to the other side because they correspond to known boundary values. That's where you get your b vector from. Uh, and actually, many of those boundary values are zero, um, so that helps. But I think you have the non-zeros along two of the boundaries. Um, so to give you a snippet of what your overall matrix looks like, actually, markers aren't doing so well here. I tested these out, uh, markers like two hours ago, and they're all fine. So, it's going to be interesting. Um, you didn't work in the class. Okay. So, for instance, you're going to have actually minus fours on diagonal. Uh, we have a one over delta x squared up front, <coughs> and ones immediately above and below, and then further down, like. Um, here we have row one, so in row n plus, in column n plus one, we have a one. And then, uh, this is a n by n block, and then we have another one down here. Um, okay. Um, and we have additional, so we have another band of ones over here, another band of ones over here, and then in this second diagonal block, this is like the 2, 2 block, we have the same pattern as before. Okay. Um, and then this block down here is going to be 0. This block down here is going to be 1s out here again. Uh, this block out here is going to be 0. So this gives you the idea of what your overall matrix is going to look like. Uh, but it's most easily formed by using those chronicler product commands um, that I gave. Uh, but it's good to have a feel for what the overall matrix looks like so you can see and look at it this way and see okay, where your boundary term is going to come from. How are you going to get your B vector? Um, actually, does someone have a problem? In, do you have a problem in front of you? No, see the, yeah, the, the boundary conditions. So in fact, I can use that to, okay, so, oh, okay, when x is 0, you have 0, and when x is, or when y is 0, you have 0. Oh, okay, that simplifies things. Thanks. Um, so, in fact, I can cut this down to two cases. These cases don't apply because you, because the boundary values are 0. Um, otherwise, you would have something here. So, it's only these cases you have to pay attention to. Uh, to make your, your B vector. All right. Um, any further question about this one? Or any other one from the homework? Homework number three, yeah. second, the second one. Uh, can you explain a little bit more about the B term. Oh, I'm so ax instead of b, you suggest so ax equals b term. Oh, oh, for problem three. Okay, yes. yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so, um, okay, actually, I'm looking at the board for that. Um, 